All right, Rachel, it's okay if I go ahead and get this party started officially? Absolutely, my friends. All right, awesome. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good morning if you're out on the West Coast, I should say. Thanks for being here. Uh, we got a full room. It's Friday. The sun just came out. I'm so happy you're all here. We got a giant room. I know you're all really busy right now, so it's awesome to see so many people joining us. We're going to be talking about donor communications uh, in the wake of this, this brave new world we find ourselves in. So thanks for joining us. I'm Steven. I'm over here at Bloomerang. And uh, I'll be moderating. You won't have to listen to me for much longer. Uh, but just a couple of housekeeping items real quick. Just want to let you all know that we're recording this session and we'll be sending out the slides and the recording as well as all the examples. Rachel's got goodies for you. We're going to get that to you this afternoon. I promise just be on the lookout for emails from both of us. You'll have that before, before dinner time, I'm sure. Um, but most importantly, I know a lot of you have already done this. But chat in uh, throughout the hour or so. We'd love to hear from you. Introduce yourself now. Uh, ask questions. We're going to save some time for Q&A at the end. We'll try to get to all the questions. I know there will be a lot of them. So if we miss you, don't worry. We're, gonna, we're actually going to connect with you afterwards as well. Um, you can also do it on Twitter. I'll keep an eye on the Twitter feed uh, if you want to do that. And if this is your first Bloomerang webinar, uh, usually we have a, a, some newbies here. Just want to uh, welcome you all, especially we do these webinars usually on Thursday, but we've been doing about a webinar a day because we just want to get some good information out there. Um, but what, we, what Bloomerang is, uh, other than being a, a webinar provider, uh, we actually provide donor management software. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Don't do that right now. Just adding that for context if you didn't know what Bloomerang was already. Um, but I'm so excited. We got my, my sister from a different mister here, Rachel, joining us from, from beautiful Austin. How's it going, Rachel? You doing it's okay? It's going so great. I'm so happy to be with you, and I'm so happy to be with every single one of you today. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, this, by the way, Rachel, uh, this was her idea. She did this on short notice because she loves you all. So she's doing us a huge, huge favor. Um, and she's spent the last couple of weeks just collecting, observing, helping people through this. Uh, so she's just going to share a lot of that stuff that, that she's seen um, and that she knows is working too. Um, she's at home just like me. If, you, if our kids barge in, I hope you'll, you'll forgive us, but I think you know what's going on. Um, just a, real quick on Rachel. If you don't know Rachel, you're going to want to know her after this presentation. One of my favorites. She has, uh, she's been in your shoes. She's a nonprofit founder, so she's not just kind of one of these talking heads that hasn't actually done what she talks about. Um, and she's all over the place. She's writing and speaking when, when we're having conferences, at least she's out there speaking. Um, and is, is just an awesome person and has some good stuff for you. So I'm going to pipe down. I'm going to stop sharing, Rach, so you can pull awesome. up yours. And uh, I'll let you take it Perfect. away. And I'll close. Okay. I'll close this situation down too. Awesome. Go so for you guys it. see my slides, everybody? Yeah, uh, the video is covering it up a little. You might want, can you drag those videos or over? Uh, hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you can hide that. Now? Yeah. Okay. Is that good? Uh, I, it's still covering the slides. Uh, no, it's good. Yeah, you're good. It's Sorry. Okay. All good. <laughs> okay. So welcome, you guys. We're going to be talking about how to communicate with our donors in this brand new reality. This is me. Uh, as Stephen said, I have spent my career in the trenches just like you. As a fundraiser, I started my own nonprofit called Girl Start to empower girls in math, science, engineering, and technology. With $500 on a credit card when I was 26, Girl Start still exists. It's still going well. What I do is train people to be better at their fundraising. I do a lot of online classes. I do a lot of online workshops. I'm in the process of launching an online subscription program, which we'll hopefully hear more about next week. I do a lot of training. Now that's all virtual, <laughs> but uh, I love helping people be better at their fundraising. And my goal for you today is to help you feel more confident and successful and prepared and um, and ready to get out there and give it all that you have. So I'm super excited to be with you. I'm a mom of twins, um, and uh, I'm, I'm not nailing it on homeschooling, <laughs> I'm totally honest. Uh, but this is a whole new reality that we're all like kind of making our way through. And who knows, a couple, uh, I have twins, so one of them might pop in any time. If you, if you come by, wave hi, because this is being recorded. <laughs> So I do workshops and board retreats right now. All of that's virtual. You can learn more about me on my website, uh, rachelmuir.com. 
and I have today's slides up. If you want to grab these now, you can, but know that we will be sharing these, of course, and know that you can type questions, of course, anytime. <clears throat> I want to say we are all in this together. And also on a positive note, can I just give a shout out for how happy dogs are right now? Just loving it that everybody's home, loving on them. But we are all in this together and uh, I'm really grateful that you chose to spend your time today with Stephen and I, and I guarantee you that you are gonna get inspired, you are gonna get examples, you are gonna get tips, you're gonna get strategies, and you're gonna get lots of tools that can help you communicate virtually with your donors. And I'm also gonna be talking about what to say to those donors as well. How much you've communicated already with your donors. Okay, so the first poll is which describes your organization. I've sent one update telling them how we're coping with this. Uh, the other option is I've sent one appeal, how this crisis is impacting our beneficiaries and asking for money. Three is I've sent multiple appeals and multiple updates. And, and the last one is I haven't done it yet. So you guys should be seeing a poll. Yeah, right? it looks like uh, most people, Rach, are saying, 45% uh, are saying they've sent uh, one update, so that first, that first response, and then it's pretty evenly split below the, the next three. And then uh, on the second question, a majority of people, 66% are saying that everyone's on board, we gotta continue, that's good. And then, uh, then there's a big drop off to about 10 or 15% for the other three. So both of the first options are, are winning on the question. Okay, so good. I'm curious, how many people, Stephen typed in and said that they've sent one appeal? Like what percentage answered that? Uh, one appeal uh, is 12%. Wow, okay. Yeah. And who said multiple appeals? How many people are doing multiple appeals? Uh, multiple appeals, about 20%. Okay, okay. So, so, so this is really interesting um, because um, the, the, we are all fundraisers now. This is one thing that I want to share with you guys. And, and, and tell me if you can see my screen again right now. Yep, you're good. Okay, okay. so here's what we are going to be talking about, my fundraising friends. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a pep talk. I'm going to talk to you about why and how you should fundraise right now. We're going to talk about what history has taught us about fundraising in a crisis. I'm gonna empower you to do some fearless fundraising and love on your donors. I wanna stress that with only 12% who have sent one appeal and only 20% of you who have sent multiple, um, I wanna encourage you, my goal for today is that you're gonna leave this webinar and you're gonna feel more empowered to get out there and fundraise because this is the time to do it. And if you don't do it, you're kind of guaranteeing that you're not gonna see any results. So my goal for you today is that you, oh cool, I love this. I, I, um, I love that I can see this. This is really awesome that I can see your, I'm gonna leave it up here. Thank you for sharing that poll. My goal for you guys is that you are gonna leave this feeling more confident uh, if you're not right now, because the truth is everyone is in fundraising now. Yesterday I got a message from one of my favorite executive directors and she shared with me a fundraising appeal that she basically wrote for her hairdresser. Her hairdresser is seven months pregnant and she can't cut hair right now. So she's inviting everyone on, on her list to buy a gift card now to book a future appointment with her or buy gift cards for friends. So I wanna encourage you, your donors, and I'm gonna talk about this more, but your donors love you and they want you to make it through this time. And giving feels incredibly good to donors and especially feels good now because it makes us feel like we can make the world a better place and that we have some control in an environment where we might not normally feel like we have control. The other super awesome thing that we are doing today, and I love that no one's telling me that there's a problem with the chat, so hopefully booting those children off of Wi-Fi worked. <laughs> but one other thing that I want to share with you that I'm super excited to share is I've got lots of really great eye candy examples that I'm gonna share with you. And I've been out there just like looking at like and asking everybody, okay, you have any good appeals and what's going on? And I've got lots of different um, examples I'm gonna show you, some really especially good like stewardship videos that are gonna warm your heart, maybe make you cry. Um, and I'm gonna give you some tools that you can use to communicate with your donors virtually. And we've got a little bit of time for Q&A. And I have uh, answered some of the questions that you guys gave me ahead of time as well. 
So let's just, let's just dig right to it. Let's just go straight forward. Are you creepy to fundraise now? Um, since 66% of you are, uh, told us that everyone is on board with fundraising in your organization. I'm feeling like you guys are not feeling like you're creepy to fundraise right now. Um, I, okay, we can, we can hide the poll if it's, um, if it's limiting you seeing. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm guessing because, um, 66% of you are on board with fundraising. This isn't so much of an issue for you now, um, but it would be creepy for you to fundraise uh, when around supporting uh, good works when you aren't. Okay, that's creepy, that's unethical, that's inappropriate. Um, but if your ability to provide services is, a be is being hampered, if you're on the verge or already cutting services, if you're on the front lines, if your clients are being impacted, then yes, you need to fundraising and that's the helping people is the kind of fundraising that would make your mom proud. Am I right, Stephen? This yes. is the kind of fundraising that, okay, and I get it. Amy says, hey, 34% of us do not have everyone on board. And I'm going to speak to that, Amy. So, so don't you worry. But that is creepy fundraising, claiming that gifts are going to support good works when they won't. That's creepy fundraising. But helping beneficiaries, um, is not creepy fundraising. We need you. Um, you are the helpers. You are out there. And this is a time when we need you. And this is also, I want to remind every single one of you that your donors love you. Your donors love you. And it feels good to give to you. And in a time of uncertainty and a time of stress, um, giving can allow you to feel like you have some control. I want to see the causes that I love and support um, continue. I want to see them be able to serve their clients and their beneficiaries. I, I'm excited about how people are being able to serve people in new and innovative ways. And I know we had a library who just typed in the chat and I'm going to let Stephen respond to them because uh, I know how passionate Stephen is about the amazing work that libraries are able to do right now. Don't assume that your donors are not going to support you. Let, you know what, they're, they're adults and they let them make that decision for themselves. Do not make that decision for them. Let them decide for themselves. I love the organizations that I support. I just became a monthly donor of an organization that I support. I was really thinking about them and how are they going to do and how are they going to make it through this crisis. Don't assume that your donors won't support you. If if you are being if your clients are being impacted, let your donors know. Let them decide. They're adults. If they don't want to give to you, if they cannot give to you, then they won't. But they're adults, and they need to decide. They love you. They give to you for a reason. They care about you. You are part of their extended family, and they want to know that their family is okay. They're adults. You're not going to trick them into giving to you. They're not irresponsible. They're not just like out there, like, you know, you know, giving without control or abandon. And, you know, so let them decide for you. This is something that we know for sure. If you don't fundraise, you won't raise any money. And, and it doesn't really matter whatever disaster. If we look at 9-11, so if we look at the recession of 2008, if we go back in history and we look at the financial crisis of 2008, I was fundraising at Girl Start. I was doing a capital campaign during that time. And there were a lot of organizations that pulled back on their fundraising. We didn't. We split up our campaign. We did not pull back on our fundraising. But a lot of organizations had a lot of success during that period. And one way to guarantee that you don't have success is to pull back on your fundraising. You're right, Jeremy, this is different than 2008. We have a pandemic and we have an economic crisis. We have both of these things going on at the exact same time. And you're absolutely right, Jeremy, that these things are, this is different. But the thing that is the same is that if you stop, if, if, your, tar if your beneficiaries are being impacted and you're not fundraising for them and you're not trying to help and you're not trying to support them during this process and you're not fundraising, then you won't raise money. I mean, the one thing that's true is if you, if you don't ask, you won't get. And it doesn't really matter. Sean Triner did a webinar for you guys a while back. And one of the things that he said is, you know, he's in Australia. And, uh, you know, the bushfire crisis and whether it's a tsunami crisis or a Hurricane Katrina 
or Hurricane Harvey or the bushfires. You know, some organizations grew a lot during the bushfires, but the organizations that sat back and said, well, it's, it's only the time for the environmental organizations and it's not the time for us to fundraise and so we won't, they kind of, you know, that, that, in, in, that guaranteed their future. Uh, Jeff Brooks would tell you that fundraising you don't do is guaranteed zero revenue, and it's also a lost opportunity that you are not going to get back. Holly's, Holly's saying we're calling our donors to check in on them and offer an update on the calls. We don't ask for money, but we feel that the update will prompt more guests and remind people of the work we're doing to protect a vulnerable population. Good for you, Holly. I'm going to brag on Holly because she's out there getting in front of this. She's out there communicating with <coughs> I'm so sorry, I moved something and dropped a stapler. She's out there loving on her donors and showing that she cares. So good for you, Holly. So if you are here and you are asking, oh, should I send my appeal out? You know, if you don't ask, they won't give. And if you cut fundraising, if you go and lay off the fundraisers, then you're really guaranteed to raise less and it's and it may not be something that you recover from. So so that's something I want you to know. I love this. This is a tweet that Steven Screen, who, uh, and and this is on Bloomerang's. I, I have a lot of posts in here for Bloomerang's resource page, uh, and Steven is on their resource page. And there is a, um, there's like a, a free appeals um, clinic that he does on Fridays, where you can send in your direct mail appeal, and he will review it and give you feedback you might maybe you want to post that link in there but it's on bloomerang's page bloomerang has this great page of all these uh covid resources uh, but i love this tweet that he said the other day organizations that are comfortable with vulnerability are raising more money right now this cri this current crisis will teach the skill of being vulnerable some orgs will not learn the lesson even now so here's some advice uh take care of yourself uh it, obviously you need to cancel or postpone an event if this is harming your clients, share it with your donors so they can help. Don't make the decision for your donors. Don't rob your donors of giving opportunities. You need to not be tone deaf and you need to communicate um, what's happening in your appeal. Uh, I'm gonna talk more about this later and show you examples of this. Uh, are your clients impacted? Share how and ask for the urgent help that you need. Maybe you've got a pop-up on your homepage. Uh, if, you, if, if, this, if, if this isn't related to you, you can communicate, hey, this was a crisis before, you know, there are a lot of things that I care a lot about that may not be directly related to this crisis, but I don't want them to stop their fight. I don't want them to give up. I still care about voting rights. I don't want anyone to be suppressed from voting. That's still something that I'm going to continue to support. There may be causes that may or may not be directly related, but you have to acknowledge the elephant in the room. Be nimble. You are going to get the slide, Sean, don't worry. Be nimble. Uh, be flexible, be fluid. This is the time where we need to move on a dime. Know that you can lose your donor's attention and you may have to do more to get it in terms of being bolder, in terms of communicating in different ways, in terms of using new tools. One of the tools that I'm going to show you is video email. So this isn't business as usual. If you're being impacted, if your clients are being impacted, if you're trying to raise money to compensate for a shortfall, to compensate for a loss in revenue, to better serve clients with, because there's more demand, to serve clients with other programs that are more expensive because you have to do them in different ways. This is, you, you wanna be communicating with your donors. This is a mix of appeals. It could be an email appeal, it could be a direct mail appeal updates for your donors, stewardship to your, for your donors. I'm going to show you lots of examples of that. Just simple, helpful things. It could be uh, a webinar. It could be a town hall. It could be, um, I'm seeing amazing examples. Uh, there's an organization here in Austin um, that is, um, it's called Generation Serve, and it's helping young people volunteer. So they're, they're sending out, here's things that you can do virtually with your kids. Steve and I were just talking before we started about um, some resources that your library was doing that they were sending out. Uh, the Boy Scouts can send, or, um, you know, here's a, here's a hike that you could do, or here's a virtual hike, or, or here's a way that you could virtually earn this badge. The Girl Scouts can have, like, online badges. I mean, there's, there are lots of different ways that you can uh, communicate, but it needs to be a mix of, um, of ask and updates and stewardship and helpful things. If you have older donors, how can you support them right now? 
they won't forget you and they'll always be grateful to you for reaching out to them and having relationships with them. But I want to stress to everybody that we need to, um, I don't want you to be tone deaf. I want you to acknowledge the elephant in the room. If you send something out and you don't, it's going to feel like, where did this come from? You know, what, what's happening here? Um, so you need to communicate with empathy. If, if you go on like nothing's happening, like this is just business as usual, you're going to come off as being very, very tone deaf. So don't pretend that things are normal and, and show your donors that you get them. I mean, think about, think about what this is like right now for your older donors. Think about what your older donors, how are your older donors taking care of themselves? How are your older donors, um, you know, grocery store shopping? How are your younger donors who maybe this is the first time they've ever um, like worked from home. Um, you know, it, I, I saw a really nice appeal recently and it had some really great language that was really about, you know, um, just acknowledging, you know, the subject line was, uh, I'm thinking about you. And the language was, this has been, a di this has been such a difficult time. You are facing challenges that you never imagined. Uh, trying to work from home, trying to work from home while you're taking care of your kids, distance learning for your kids, worrying about your family, worrying about the health of your family. Like show your donors that you get them. When you send out messages that don't acknowledge any of this, it feels really toned up. I kind of live in two different worlds because I live in the fundraising world and I also get a lot of communication from people who, uh, from online marketers. And I hear a lot of online marketers that are sending me messages that are feel completely tone deaf because they're not doing anything to acknowledge what's happening right now. This got some press this week. Uh, Ole Miss sent out, oh, and it's so timely because Marika from Alaska, well, you got to tell me, type in and tell me what temperature it is in Alaska right now. Um, uh, Ole Miss got criticized this week because they, they had this campaign, oh, 39 degrees. They had this campaign that I think was maybe like on autopilot you need to revisit all of your communications. If you have planned communications like your email autoresponder, I'm gonna talk about this later, but your email autoresponder that you're sending out right now needs to thank donors for, um, for, for being so generous at, at a time like now, okay? So I'm gonna give you examples of doing that later. But if you have something that, you know, oh, we were gonna hit that campaign and we haven't revisited it, you need to revisit everything that's about to run uh, there, you know, this came off as, um, this, this was really, you know, there was a, a very negative reaction to this. Now you might, uh, uh, there is also, I want to say, I want to acknowledge that I've seen so many articles recently about people planning their wills and people, uh, re revisiting their wills and people really focusing on that. You might have a donor who starts a conversation with you about plan giving and having a conversation with that donor about this is something that I would say could absolutely happen. But my point in this is whatever appeals that you have, um, if you have some that are on autopilot, you need to stop. You need to look at all of those and you need to think about how this is going to be um, perceived right now. Okay, so to help you embrace your vulnerability, my fundraising friends, I want to invite you I mean, you're, you're thinking about sending out an appeal, you know, it's something like 30, 38% of you said that there, you were still getting pushback from people around fundraising right now. Um, so if you are feeling like, um, okay, uh, what's, just tell me, like, what is the worst thing that's going to happen? What is the worst, if you're fundraising, your clients are impacted, you're trying to raise money, um, what is the worst thing that is literally going to happen? I mean, it may not do well. Okay. Yeah. It not doing anything is going to guarantee you that you're going to raise nothing. I, 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 I'm not a psychic and I can't predict the future, but I can predict that. Oh, uh, so Brett said you could lose a donor. Yeah, you could, you could offend someone. I, you could absolutely offend somebody, but you know what? If your clients are being impacted, if you're trying to help your beneficiaries and if you need your donors to support you in order to do that and you're giving them the opportunity to help the 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 beneficiaries that they love the reason why they support your organization that's your job that's your job as a fundraiser your job is not to offend as few people as possible 
I offend people sometimes. It's okay. That's all right. I, I'm never going to win everyone over. I wrote a, I wrote a, before all this happened, I wrote this blog post for Bloomerang. What do we call it? Um, it was like your bill of rights as a fundraiser, the fundraiser's bill of rights. And that's one of the things I talk about that in there is that like, you're not gonna make all of the people happy all of the time. Um, but if you're out there and your clients are being impacted and you're trying to raise money to better serve them and you're bringing those opportunities to your donors, there's nothing wrong with that. That is fundraising that your mom will be proud of. Um, I wanna say Katie said we sent an email appeal to over 30,000 and we received less than 10 negative responses. Thank you for sharing that, Katie. I, I really hope that, um, I really hope that this, that Katie's experience makes you guys feel better. I can tell you that I'm on a lot of listservs and I'm on a, in a lot of Facebook groups and I know Stephen is too. And one of the things that I'm really seeing is people saying, uh, you know, talking about oh, my board won't let me do this and, and so and so and my CEO doesn't want to do this and and there's a lot of fear around people fundraising right now. And I, I see these bright spots uh, like what you just shared where someone does and they're like, wow, this really worked. Our donors were so happy to get this. They absolutely loved this. They responded to us. This went really well. So if you think back, I'm just going to ask you in your fundraising mind to go back a few years ago. Remember when we had the ice bucket challenge? And honestly, I mean, if we're being realistic, if that idea, which didn't originate from ALS, if that whole idea came completely outside of the organization. But if that idea had come from the organization and it was being batted around in a board meeting, it could have gotten shut down. It could have gotten shut down. Shona just said that we've sent three email fundraising appeals and got three unsubscribes and have raised nearly $20,000 so far. It's working. Harriet, oh, I love Harriet. From the Girl Scouts, our cookie program was interrupted, so we sent out a special email appeal today to our supporters. Eat, share, show communities you care. They can order cookies for themselves or be donated to those on the front lines of this hospital. That is awesome. I love that. I knew that I knew the girls got to do something amazing and awesome and fantastic. I love that. Um, so just know that. I mean, and I have a truth bomb here. This is this is Mark. This is Stephen and I, or I love Mark with his bow tie. And I saw this, he put this in, uh, I think it was like the nonprofit storytelling group, the Facebook group, but he said, if your board is telling you now is not the time to ask, thank them, then ask anyway, it's not their decision. So Mark said it, not me. And I think he even, I think someone even said, can I, can I give my board members your phone number or something? And I think, uh, anyway, I, I think he actually said yes, but uh, but look, this is this is uh, this is what he's saying. If your board's telling you now is not the time, thank them and ask anyway. If your clients are being impacted, if this is going to help um, better serve your clients, if they're being impacted, then you really have an obligation. So this is one of my favorite authors. I love Cheryl Strait. Uh, I've read every book that she's written, and for and, and she used to have this column called Dear Sugar. And it was like an advice column and people would write in and they'd ask for her advice. So sometimes, I don't know about you, but you know, if you ever like to think like, you know, what would Oprah do? Or, you know, I like to think what would Cheryl Strayed do? Or what would Cheryl Strayed tell fundraisers to do? So these are, these are real quotes. These are some of my favorite quotes. I love this. Bravery is acknowledging your fear and doing it anyway. This is not the moment to wilt into the underbrush of your insecurities. You've earned the right to grow. We are all going to grow from this. We are going to grow in ways that we do not even know about right now. I am seeing so much innovation, and I can't wait to show you some examples a little bit later. I am seeing so much innovation. And we're gonna, we're gonna be fundamentally transformed. The way that we communicate with each other, the way that we give, we're gonna see online giving absolutely completely skyrocket right now. But the thing that I want you to know is you've gotta be brave and you've got to be authentic. You've got to be willing to be vulnerable. I want you to be brave. I want you to show your donors that you deeply care and I don't want you to be afraid to ask. And I'm gonna show you a lot of tools to help you do this. Uh, donor love is more important than ever before, ever before. And if you have a question, type it into the um, Q&A box and I'm gonna do my best to answer questions 
at the end. And then I'm also going to answer, I'm going to do a blog post uh, that'll maybe next, it'll maybe come up, definitely come out next week, it's Friday, and answer a lot of your questions there as well. So donor love is more important than ever before. I'm going to show you lots of ways, innovative ways for you to show your donor love. But one way is that you'd be sensitive to the needs of older donors. They could be home alone. I'm hearing a lot of people are getting through to donors and a lot of donors are actually answering the phone uh, when you call them. I'm gonna show you some really great tools to help you cut through the noise. I'm gonna show you video email. I'm also gonna show you a really neat texting tool. But if you have older donors, you can call them to chat. You can offer to help them. Maybe they need some help with ordering groceries online. They're gonna remember you for it. I have an example that I'm gonna show you a little bit later of a sample video email thank you that I did. And then I say, hey, if you wanna hop on the phone and just chat, I always love to talk to our donors. I'd love to hear, I'd love to just chat more, learn more about you. have got 10 minutes, here's a link to my calendar. And I put it in there. So you're gonna see an example of that. I'm gonna send out an email with links to all this as well. I, I love this quote from uh, Russell James, crisis is the time to show support. It's the defining moments that identifies a friendship relationship rather than a transactional one. So in our world as fundraisers, there's a lot of fundraising that is transactional, but this is a crisis and this is your moment to turn to, to really deepen this as an authentic relationship. And it starts with you not being afraid and it starts with you being vulnerable. Um, I love this. Jesse said, I spent all week calling and thanking our donors to let them know we are praying for them and their families. Everyone has been incredibly thankful for the conversation and several lab donors have given for the first time in years. Yay, Jesse. Yay, you. Danielle said, I called some of our older donors. And um, she has something lovely to say. I just lost the chat. But she had something like, called some of our older donors. And one of them even said that she was just excited to talk to someone. It ended up being a really sweet conversation. This is lovely. This is lovely. Uh, Gina asked, how can I be successful with corporate engagement during this uncertain time? No, this, I'm not going to see, uh, with, with companies right now, I don't think you're going to see a lot. They may be shut down. You can still communicate and with the relationships that you had and talk to those folks. But for them, um, you know, their, their budgets and other things are going to be impacted. So I'm going to you can watch this, but I'm going to be really fancy and I'm going to attempt the fundraising friends. Steven and I tested this when we started. So I'm going to attempt to play this video because this is really short and it's really sweet. And this is a beautiful example of stewardship from the Royal National Lifeboat Institute in the UK. They're a seafaring nation. These, just like we have volunteer firefighters, they have volunteer rescue lifeboat crews who are going out rescuing people. And this is a beautiful, sweet stewardship piece that they sent to, uh, to their donors. It's a really short video. It is something that it look, I mean, I would assume that aside from um, him talking in front of the camera, that a lot of the other footage they already have, this is something that is, looks like, looks like something that, you know, a similar organization could put together with existing footage and maybe like you and your webcam in a pretty short amount of time, even potentially using some tool as simple as iMovie. So I'm going to be fancy here and I'm gonna hit new share. And I am going to show this um, video. So I'm gonna go with my screen to, I'm gonna optimize. Well, first I'm gonna do this, screen two, okay. Okay, so do you, okay. So do you see it? I'm still seeing the slide, Rachel. There it goes. Just, you see just it? Okay. Over. Yep. I'm gonna re I'm gonna see if I can rewind it here. I don't know when we're seeing okay. um, uh, Here we go. Playing it from the beginning. Hi there. My name's Dave, and I'm a volunteer for the member. When we answer the call for help, it's an uncertain time. We don't know what we'll face, and we don't know when we'll see our loved ones again. But the thing that keeps us going is your support. And now Wherever you are, you're probably feeling uncertain about the future too. That's why I wanted to get in touch and say, today, we're sending our support to you. Because you're part of the crew, and crew members look out for each other. So on behalf of the Lifesavers, thank you so much for thinking of us in the past. Right now, we're thinking of you too. We hope you're able to 
take safe care. From everyone at the Arrow Line, take care. Is that beautiful or what? Do you got, I just love that video. Did ever, was everyone able to see it okay? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so I have a couple other videos and I'm gonna go ahead and play these other ones, uh, if that's okay with you guys since this seems to be working so far. So do you see a girl with a backpack right now? Yes. Steven? All right, so this one, I gotta warn you. Okay, these next two videos, um, <laughs> That the first one I, I, my friend Barbara shared that with me on LinkedIn. I'm so grateful that my friend Barbara O'Reilly. So these next two videos are from my girl Lynn Wester, who I love and adore. And I just, she's like the fundraising, she's like the comedian of fundraising. I just love Lynn, and Lynn serves a lot of clients in higher ed. And I, and, and Lynn has some really great resources, and she had these videos, and I just I love these videos. So you know, the Royal, before I play you this video, I want to say that, that the Royal National Lifeboat Institute video, simple, you know, heartfelt message, short, definitely something that I feel like many organizations could pull together. Now, these next couple of videos, these are from, these are from universities, okay? I just want to acknowledge they have bigger budgets, okay? Um, but I, I, I want you to just be aware of the of the emotions in this, the pride in this, the pride that you would feel as an alumni if you've never heard of Blazer Nation before, the pride that you would feel as an alumni and how they have so successfully in these videos managed to connect with, I get you, this is heartbreaking. You're not getting to have these experiences, but we can look back on our memories. So I just want you to, I want you to think about all those emotions because whether you are the Boy Scouts or my girls, my girls, the Girl Scouts. This is, you know, this is a this is a movement. Boys and Girls Club. This is a movement. This is an identity. This is part of something. And I want you to think about all the things that uh, people bring to this experience and honoring that. So I'm gonna play this video. I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up and play this video. <laughs> Dear Blazer Nation, today we are faced with anxiety and uncertainty. We have questions about our, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. our future, about this new reality we each must face. Might we, in this season of change, offer love, compassion, and kindness to our neighbors, to our seniors. Know that your future is bright and your greatest moments of celebration are still yet to come. To our many student athletes, Know that you will find victory again in bonds with faith with your teammates and class of lifetime. To our faculty and staff, your mission and impact has never been greater. The lessons and guidance you give now in this time will shape your students for years to come. And to the millions at Blazer Nation at home and abroad, remember that a blaze is always brightest in the dark. Was that, I love that. Wow. So, so beautiful. Okay. So I'm going to go back. Uh, I'm going to, do you see my slides now? Uh, yep. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to close this window here because you know how YouTube can suddenly just start playing <laughs> um, some other video. Um, so, uh, so I hope that you guys enjoy that. I hope that those inspire you. Uh, um, so, okay, so we've got Blazer Nation. This is another really good one, but I wanna be sensitive about how we're doing on time because we have like 15 minutes left. Um, but this is another kind of similar one uh, from Lynn's alma mater at the uh, University of South Carolina. This is the Gamecocks, and this was a really beautiful, beautiful tribute. You can watch it there, bit.ly forward slash the final walk. I, I will send you guys the, um, 
handouts to this. You can download the handouts too, but I will include the links to all of these videos as well. Uh, I love video email. I'm going to show you guys a little bit about video email and how um, video email works and what you can do. Okay, I'm glad that you guys are loving the video. Sweet. Okay, so this is Bomb Bomb video email. So I have been a, a happy customer. Of I don't work for Bomb Bomb. I don't get paid if you sign up for Bomb Bomb. I just love this tool and I use this tool and this is a really neat tool that you can use to virtually communicate with your donors when you can't be there. And it is so super easy and you can literally record it from your inbox. I can literally hit play. I've been doing that lately and just telling people, hey, I'm thinking about you, I'm checking on you. I wanna know how you're doing. Uh, my friend, um, I'm gonna show you an example. You can, you can uh, I'm gonna show you an example a little bit later on of, of this and what this looks like. And I even sent one that you're gonna get in my follow-up video where I'm doing a sample thanks with a coronavirus specific script, which is basically just acknowledging to people like how, how much they appreciate that you gave to them now. So there's a lot of really great resources um, on Bloomerang's webpage around the coronavirus resources. Um, if you had an event you had to cancel, um, you can make it up. This is some tips from Stephen's screen. Uh, make it up with an emergency appeal. Talk about how this is impacting services, why the gift is needed now. You can make your campaign deadline, the event date. Uh, so just an idea if you had to cancel an event. It feels like a lifetime ago. I feel like it was literally two weeks ago. I was on a, I, I joined a, a office hours that um, Roger Craver and Jeff Brooks and Sean Triner were on just talking to people and these lovely people from Spectrum Sleep Out joined and they were talking about their virtual event. And uh, well, they're talking about their live event in Vermont, like everyone's sleeping out to draw attention to homelessness and what should I do? And people were sharing ideas and I was like, oh my God. And it, it just seems, it feels like a lifetime ago. I remember I was taking my daughter to the orthodontist appointment and uh, anyway, and, and I was like, oh, what it, what, this is so great. You could have people doing selfies and they could tag their friends in it. And anyway, it, I have like a special heart for this because it was, it just was something that, you know, it, it feels like a lifetime ago, but it wasn't that long ago. But the really awesome thing is they were able to really successfully turn this into an, a virtual event and Rachel and went, oh, Natasha participated in college. Susan says, I love Spectrum. So they were really successful in transitioning this to a virtual event. Uh, so they're a really great example of successfully turning something in to a virtual event. I'm going to give you guys some sample appeals because I know you're probably wondering. Uh, I, we already did this poll, so we can skip that. Uh, if you have nothing to do with this, like if, if this is not impacting you directly, you can say, hey, the truth is we had important work planned before any of us knew the extent of this and that work must continue. Okay, uh, so that is something that, um, you know, if this is, but you have to address this. This is the elephant in the room and it's really important that you be able to address this. So that is an example of someone addressing this where they're not involved in their clients aren't impacted by coronavirus. This is an environmental organization. They're not impacted by this, but they, and, and their donors, let the donor decide, you know, a donor who is contributing to the environment, this is just because this, the environment is still going to be important to them. Okay. Just because this is happening doesn't mean that they don't love the environment any less. If they can't give right now, they won't give right now. Let them decide. Don't make that decision for them. Um, this is some examples. All of these, again, these are some examples from Mark Phillips. These are all up at Bloomerang's website uh, on COVID. Um, so this is something that, you know, um, you, you can see this. Um, Acknowledging in the very first sentence here at the time of great worry and uncertainty for us all, I sincerely hope that you and your loved ones are in good health. Very respectful, very appropriate. I would avoid saying something in there like washing your hands or something like that. I mean, we don't need to tell people that anymore. Although Stephen shared before we started an adorable, um, an adorable image from Boys and Girls Club where they've taken their logo and they put of the hands and they put bubbles on it, which I absolutely love. These are some examples of some emergency appeals. You can watch Sean's webinar 
on Bloomerang's website. Bloomerang's has lots of really great um, recordings of other webinars, but a couple things I wanna point out here, the urgency, uh, this is a crisis appeal, um, the use of I is something else I wanna point out here. This is one of the most important letters I've ever written. This is the most important letter I have ever written. So this isn't we, this is I, this makes this language a lot stronger. Uh, and this is telling exactly, this is uh, you know exactly what's happening, why money is needed now, how money now is going to make a difference. This is another one. This is a, obviously a appeal that, that Stephen got. Um, and this is in the examples that Bloomerang has up on their site. You can see there's oodles and oodles and oodles of resources there that you guys can see. Um, this is an example of a coronavirus email appeal. And so Stephen's screen, and I know that this link is also on Bloomerang's page, but every Friday, Stephen does this thing where he is editing. He's, people submit their appeals and he like edits them. So this is a, a sample email appeal. Um, it shares a specific example of how the virus is hurting beneficiaries of the organization. Um, it talks about how these um, are, um, this is an emergency fund, these are unexpected expenses. You need to be thinking about um, why the donor should give their gift right now. Uh, putting an acute timely need in front of your donors is not slimy, <laughs> it is not slimy. Donors respond to new acute needs. Um, so if you are having a disruption in family, in serving families, and you are raising money to solve these problems and that's not in your budget, this is an opportunity for you to fundraise around that. Um, so this is example is there. Uh, you need to show your donors that you know them during this time. So I'm also gonna show a couple examples of Corona specific things. And I just have a couple, a couple more here. We're almost done, I'm gonna move fast. But this is, uh, a, I want you to visit all of your thank you autoresponders. And, and I wanna say, Stephen put the link in the chat right there. If you want to sign up and participate, every Friday, Stephen Screen does that. Uh, it's worklessraisemore.com. Uh, you can sign up there. But I wanna mention that this is the elephant in the room and you need to acknowledge what is happening in your thanks. And this is beautiful. The fact, this is from Mark Phillips from Blue Frog. The fact that you were thinking of others at what is a worrying and difficult time for us speaks volumes of your kindness and fellow feeling. I mean, they're great to donate to you in the first place, but it's, it's, this is another opportunity for you to acknowledge what an especially generous human being that they are, that in, that in a time of uncertainty, um, they are stepping up to give. That is a very, very beautiful thing. Um, so you can watch this. I put this link up here. You're going to get this in my email that I'm going to send you. And this is me using a bomb bomb video email to send a personal thank you to a donor. And I say in this, um, uh, you can, you'll see this in the video that I send you. You can also watch it there, but I say in this, how kind you are in times like this to reach, to, to support us. Uh, very soon. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, so if you have a question, just type it in the Q&A box. Whatever I can't reach, I will um, do in a uh, blog post. Okay, so I love this. I'm just gonna give some stewardship examples now. So we've talked about appeals. I've shared some really awesome videos. I'm just gonna share a few stewardship examples. If anyone has seen the awesome uh, shed aquarium animals who are like going on field trips uh, around the museum, um, this is Wellington, the penguin. He's going on a field trip. He's seeing the sea otters. Tyson, the porcupine, is taking a field trip. These are all really fantastic. And this is a really good stewardship. I feel like I'm there when I'm not. I would never, I mean, normally penguins aren't roaming shed aquarium on their own, um, you know, getting to take a field trip. But this is, this is a a really nice stewardship thing. I love this. You can watch this. I put up this bit.ly link right here. You can see Alvin Ailey Dance Theater. I love Alvin Ailey Dance Theater. 
um, so much. And they shot this amazing video of all of their dancers warming up to perform Revelations. And they're, they're performing the very first part of Revelations. And it's this beautiful, you get to see all of these different people in their home, in their t-shirts, in their backyard, in their sweatpants with their dogs, in the, in their, uh, on their balcony with their kids in the background. And they're all warming up and they're all doing uh, the beginning part of Revelations, which, which they do is the final uh, uh, dance that they do at the end of their performance. It is absolutely incredible. And, uh, you know, and I love this. Out Ailey dancers are still dancing. I, I do an online class and we were visiting today and one of my students was like, oh my goodness, we had this whole crowdfunding campaign planned. We were going to have people, we're going to be uh, our, our, our singers, they were uh, Phoenix Chorale, our singers were going to be performing and people were going to be uh, donating and the singers were going to be, do, you know, singers were going to be like fundraising, crowdfunding for us. And we talked about, hey, please don't stop the music. And we talked about, uh, or we talked about individuals singing their favorite hand washing songs. We also talked about individuals um, singing, um, you know, about keep the music going. We talked about doing a crowdfunding contest where whoever raised the most money, they, you, you got to pick from what song they were going to sing and they were going to sing that song and they were going to be the winner from their crowdfunding campaign. So lots of different ideas. You're seeing lots of fantastic innovation out here. If you haven't seen this Colorado Symphony performing Ode to Joy, it's beautiful and it really reconnects us with, you know, I, I'm him hearing, Stephen and I talked about this a little bit at the beginning, arts organizations who are like, well, we're just the arts and you, people love, we love you and we want to see you be successful and you bring so much joy and so much beauty to our lives and we recognize that and we appreciate that and your donors do as well. And I love this. If you saw this, this was an, an elderly neighbor who was self-isolating and the neighborhood kids went to our front porch and just recorded a cello concert for her. These kids got all dressed up and went on her front porch just to bring her joy and happiness. So I'm going to share a couple tools to make it easy. Um, and I'm sensitive. We have like, I'm going to go so fast. This, I got to give a shout out to Boy Scouts of the Blue Mountain Council. Um, th this is bomb bomb video email tool. They're in their uniforms. You know, Girl Scouts could do something uh, wearing their amazing green and navy and just talking to their donors. Hey, they had to reschedule an event. They shot a video email letting everyone know uh, why they rescheduled the, how they postponed it when it was rescheduled for thanking them for their support um you can watch an example of this from my girl julie edwards from the humane society of northeast georgia um you can see it up there uh, bit.ly forward slash julie puppy capitalize the j but that was uh, uh i think she sent that around thanksgiving it was just a video that she shot from her desk thanking one of her donors i love video email they will you can you can have a free two week trial and you can use that to send videos. Um, they if you become a customer they will brand uh, video email stationery for you with your logo. Uh, but this is a really uh, this is a really nice way to get in front of your donor. And here's the really cool part: type into the chat if you would like to know if your donors are reading your emails, yes or no, just type yes. If you would like to know if your donors are reading your emails without them knowing that you know that they're reading their emails. Well, the other super cool thing about this is that when they open it, you get, if you set it that way, you can set your notifications, but you can set your notifications to be notified when your donors watch your videos. So, um, so I really rely on this a lot because I, you know, train people to be better fundraisers and I need to, if I know that they're reading my emails, then I know that they got it and that they might respond to me. So another tool, this is, this is an app that on your iPhone or your iPad that will allow you to digitally create a handwritten card. This is an app. Ooh. I saw, yeah, I saw them on, um, Shark Tank. And I am not shy about emailing people and saying, oh my God, I can, or calling them and saying like, I love this tool. Can I learn more about this? I think this is really neat. In case you're wondering how they did on Shark Tank, um, they got, I think $100,000 from Mr. Wonderful because Mr. Wonderful saw this as a play for the bridal market. So 
I use this. This was uh, before the coronavirus when I was hired. I do a lot of board retreats. I can do those virtually now. Uh, but I, uh, I sent a thank you. We took a photo together of uh, myself and the board members took a photo together and I sent it to the development director. This is a really neat tool. You never lick a stamp. This is all done completely virtually. They will make stationery for you. It can be accordion stationery. They will brand it with your logo. It is very inexpensive. I think it's like six dollars a month you can even do a free trial like it needs to be free it's so inexpensive but it's the felt app.com this is my last tool this is my last tip um this is texting so another um I, I called this company on the phone the ceo answered the phone and i was like i think this is so neat and can i uh, tell nonprofits about what you do. And he was like, heck yes, you can, Rachel. His name's Justin, by the way. He said, heck yes, you can. And you can give him a, I'll give him a free 30 day trial. So if you want to try this, say, Hey, Justin, uh, Rachel said that you're going to give me a free 30 day trial. He'll give you a free 30 day trial. You basically, um, this is a really neat tool. You can just upload. It's called textology. These are some examples. I said, Justin, I want some eye candy examples. And he said, Rachel, send me some photos and some sentences and I'll make you some. And that's what he did. And then he texted these to me. So you're seeing screenshots of that. This is a super great tool to use for stewardship. This is a great tool to use to communicate your donors now. And I get it that you're probably thinking to yourself right now, well, I don't know if I have my donor's mobile phone or not. That's totally cool. Because what you what he, Justin does is he like uploads your file of phone numbers and his system will tell you like what is a what is a landline and what is not a landline. So you don't even have to know that. You don't have to worry about that. But this is a really neat tool because I want you to know that text open rates are 98%. 98%. We open our text messages. And what's super also cool about this is um, you probably already know there's a silence unknown callers feature on the new operating system. So it can be harder to get through when you're calling your donors, although I am hearing a lot of people answering the phones. But what's really cool about this is you can respond from your desktop. Just because you're texting to a donor, you can send all these messages from your desktop and you can reply to messages. It's textology.com, textology.com. Oh, www type if it's not working type www in front of it um oh you thank you robin i have a link to my calend rachel muir calendly forward slash rachel muir i have some questions here's my uh contact information so you guys can have that i'm gonna send you everything you're gonna get everything you can email from me with all the links and everything else um i'm gonna i'm launching a new program that's coming up a new subscription program i can't wait to tell you guys more about that um i'm gonna answer your questions i have a lot of these here um textology okay it should i'm sorry if that link is bad they might be having internet problems i promise it's uh uh, a good company, a, a valid company, um, but they may be having, yeah, they may be having technology issues. So I'm going to answer a few questions. We are like, well, do I have time to answer a few, Stephen? I'm, I'm, I have, I have nothing else to do the rest of the day. So if people want to <laughs> hang out, I would love to keep talking about this stuff because okay. I'm fired up about I, it too. Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to leave this up for anyone who wants to contact me or has to scoot out right now. And I'm going to hop on over to the Q&A box. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Lindsay, thank you. Okay, so Lindsay corrected it for all of us. Uh, it's textology.co. Sorry. So kind of like you guys, right? Bloomerang, you're CEO. Yeah, that's the cool thing Bloomerang. to do these days is ditch the M. <laughs> <laughs> you trendsetter. <laughs> Okay, um, so I'm gonna go in and answer some of these questions. I'm just gonna pop out some of these. I want you guys to have my information. Um, okay, Mackenzie asked, oh, uh, Gwen says she can't see the chat thread. I'm not sure. I'll let Stephen take care of that. But Lindsay, Mackenzie asked, should our direct appeal mention COVID-19 or should we do our best to avoid addressing it? If this is impacting you, if this is impacting your clients, if you are trying to serve your clients and this is impacting them and you need to raise money in order to serve them, you should mention it. If this impacts you, you should mention it. If this doesn't impact you, if you are like an, an environmental organization that's working on um, an environmental issue and this doesn't really relate to this at all, but you could say, this issue was important before this crisis and it's 
It isn't any less important now. The point that I want you to make, and I want you to own this, and I want you to live this, and I want you just to like own this space and take advice from Cheryl Strayed here is um, your donors are adults and they are going to make decisions whether or not they want to give to you. And if they loved you before, there's no reason why they're not going to love you now. And if they care about your issue and you uh, have, you, if you stop fundraising, it, I mean, if, if you, you know, like if I just stop, I can't just stop parenting. You know, I can't. <laughs> if you stop fundraising, you know, what's going to happen. Um, so I, I feel like I've given you some, some ideas and some strategies, whether you are directly impacted, if you are directly impacted, you need to get out there. Uh, time is of the essence. Don't waste any time. We're kind of all fundraisers now. I shared the example of my friend, uh, whoops, I shared the example of my friend. Um, so I'm going to go through a few more of these and answer some of these. Okay. How do you balance needs versus wants? I would focus on the needs. <laughs> That's what I would do. That was a question from Molly. We're a live performance theater. We are dark until mid-May. We are losing money for every act that doesn't appear on stage, but we feel bad asking for money when there are more urgent needs. You, okay, I get it. I totally, you, you all, like, you, I get feeling bad, okay? But we want you to survive. So you should know what you need to survive and you can fundraise for that, okay? Like, we don't want you to not exist anymore when this is over, um, so you that is for you to decide, that is for you to know how much you uh, need to raise and for you to, uh, to, to survive and thrive. You're welcome, Louise. Oh, Julie. <laughs> Julie Collins from the um, Cascades Raptor Center joined us, and it was funny because I had a screen, the screenshot of, uh, people of, of you getting to see if your donors open your video email was Julie because I sent Julie a video and every time she watched it I was like yay I'm trending really big with the Raptor Center right now um so um so uh so lots of really good questions um and I have a lot of these oh a lot of these answered here. So if you are Veronica, Ingrid, Claire, or Lindsay, and you took the time to type in a question to Stephen, just know that you are there. Um, so Lee asked, I'm feeling slightly paralyzed in this situation because all of our events have been postponed until the fall. We rely almost exclusively on peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. What tips and advice can you provide for how I can communicate and still encourage them to fundraising without being toned up and insensitive? Okay you can't be toned up and you can't be insensitive. And I would say you're going to have to do, you're going to have to get really creative with virtual events. You're going to have to get really creative with virtual events. I shared the example of like the peer to peer contest earlier with the um, Phoenix Corral and how they, you know, were okay. How can we make this? How can we, you know, we, the, each singer picks like um, the song they really want to sing, whether it's um, you know, uh, won't you be my neighbor or, you know, whatever is their favorite song, they're going to sing it and they're going to have a competition to see who they can raise the most money for Phoenix Corral. Uh, and then that's the song that they're going to sing, or you're gonna, just going to have to be creative. I think the, the silver lining in all this is that we are going to be creative about how we communicate with people in new and inventive ways and in how we deliver our programs in new and inventive ways. And what Steve and I want you to go out there and do is love on your donors and communicate with your donors and reach out to your donors. And this is, this is the time this, they will never forget it. They will always appreciate it. Um, I hope that is helpful to you. Um, Yolanda said our major fundraiser is an event planned for November. How do you remind donors to buy tickets with the hope that the large group ban will be lifted? I mean, I think it's going to be really, I think it's going to be hard to do that right now because I think that uh, November, I'm going to say November is a long way away, uh, but I, but I do think that it's going to be hard um, because there's so much uncertainty for where we are going to be then. Uh, I, I have seen a lot of stuff that's, that's postponed until the fall. Uh, Gina shared a link, Washington Performing Arts turned their major gala into a virtual event in three days. Way to go, Gina. Thanks for sharing that and inspiring everybody. Okay, so 
I'm going to answer a couple more because I want to be sensitive. A t Crystal asked for a timeline example. I'm not sure what she means by a timeline. What stewardship means in this context is, okay, so I guess Louise is um, kind of coming from stewardship from the like angle of, of the congregation. So stewardship to fundraisers is how are we um, being good stewards to our donors and communicating to them about the impact of their gifts and just maintaining relationships with them. That is what stewardship means in this context. Okay, so Christy asked, Rachel, do you agree that before we make ask, we should inquire as to how our donors are doing first? Unfortunately, some of our organizations are missing this, a very important step in our, in my opinion, and are being insensitive and sending out urgent appeals without showing the human empathy. Thoughts, question mark. This is a very interesting question, Christy. So I would say this, um, I would say this to you, Christy. I would say um, that, uh, email appeal, a direct mail appeal. Yes, you should. You should send out a. If you if you are one of it's look. It seemed like if I look back. Yeah, I think that I think that forty five percent of you had given donors one update. Forty five percent of the people in our poll at the beginning had given donors one update. So it, you would be smart to send something out now. Um, I'm thinking about you. I shared the example subject line like I'm thinking about you. Dear Rachel, this has been an incredibly difficult time for all of us. You're facing challenges you never imagined. Show that you get it. Show that you know what their challenges are. In this case, this was a, an example that I saw where they were basically giving them, giving the donor something to enjoy that was related to them as an uh, as a animal organization. You can enjoy. You can you know an environmental a wildlife organization. You can do this. So you know I would say. Uh, it would be nice if you sent your, I would love it in a perfect world. I would love it if you sent out some nice stewardship piece first, of course, but I don't want, but um, you could send out something really nice via email. But if you're in a crisis and you need to raise money, uh, I don't want, I want you to go out there and I want you to do it. I don't want you to not do it. And I don't want you to, oh, we, we're, we're not going to be able to fundraise. We've got this, cri this urgent, urgent need. And instead, we're just going to cut everything. We're not going to do anything. We're not going to give meals to these people. We're not going to do anything because it's going to take us a month to raise this money. People, you've got to be nimble and you've got to be fast. And ideally, yes, that I would like for you to send out some uh, something to show your donors that you're thinking of them, that you appreciate them. And yes, you will have better results if you do that. But um, I don't expect you to, I mean, I want to be realistic here that you have to move fast. And I realize that, um, that this isn't a matter of, you know, I, I don't, this isn't a matter of like, you have to personally f call all 500 donors on your list before you send out an email appeal. You could use a tool like bomb bomb video email and you could send a video email. I'm thinking about you. It could be a, sh a shot of you just talking about like how you're thinking of them. You recognize how hard this is. Um, if there's anything you can do to help, if there's a way that you can help them with, you know, anything that they need, just offer to help them. You can put a link to them to book some time with you. Um, you could send something like that immediately and then maybe your appeal hits the next day or your appeal hits two days later. Um, that will get you better results than if you just sent out the appeal first. Um, but I don't want you to be in the situation of like you throw up your hands and you're like, I can't do anything um, because I want you to be empowered and be strong and get out there. And um, so I hope that is helpful to you. Um, don't, don't overthink it, you know, in terms of like, well, I've got to send, I've got to hand write cards to 1000 people myself personally, before we can send out an appeal. Don't make it so impossible or hard. You could send an email out thanking people, but I would like, I do want your email autoresponder to be um, related and relatable and contemporary to what this crisis is and how we're dealing with this now. And I showed you example of that earlier. Oh, Mary said, I cried with that second example. I think it was the second video that made her cry. Um, um, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Mich Ma Michelle Lean DeFranco asked, is bomb bomb video email similar to thank you? Absolutely. It is definitely similar to thank you. It's just a little bit different in that it is a, um, uh, thank you is kind of like a paperless post, uh, and bomb bomb has like, it's more like a branded email stationery, but absolutely. Um, 
And I think, let's see, I'm making sure. There's a lot more than I have time to answer here. Uh, all your boards, Tiffany asks, how should we be encouraging our boards to support us? This is a time of crisis and all of your board members should be stepping up and supporting your organization in this time. And a crisis, I had this conversation recently with the students in my class. In a crisis like this, this, this could be a time where people are, are maybe making some decisions or you might be making some decisions around you know, we really need to get people to step up and you might have some people who are saying I can't be involved anymore in this at this, at this time. Um, Andrea asked if I recommend particular platforms for particular age groups. No, I don't. Uh, these work for everyone. Seniors receive email. Um, <laughs> my dad sends me a reply every time I send an email to my list. <laughs> He's 82. It's really cute. They're really cute. <laughs> Um, so, okay, lots of great questions. Some of these are, um, okay, there's some very, very specific questions. Um, we are in the midst of a change in the executive drug there. There has not been an intermediate move forward or get anything out there or do any fundraising. Our April campaign is canceled. Love to get something started. Any advice on how to get the intermediate board on board with addressing it, let alone starting a new campaign now? Well, it's really as simple as like, what are we raising money for? Uh, what happens if we don't raise money? And how are we going to communicate our case to our donors. Um, there's lots of examples in here for you to help you do this, but I would say um, that's really the most important thing for you to be able to do. Lauren asked, do you think it's okay to mail and ask? We don't have a ton of good emails. Our organization is just beginning to build a real development program. Absolutely, you can, you can, you can mail, you can email. I know that our friends, I don't know if Stephen has any more updated information. I know that in some countries, like I wanna say, I wanna say I saw something like in, in some countries they're seeing like, um, less activity around being able, just being able to mail, but I don't, we're, I'm not aware of us seeing that here in the US. So absolutely, you can do direct mail. A lot of organizations who are communicating and fundraising right now in this crisis are doing a combination of email and direct mail, both. Um, so absolutely. Uh, Elizabeth said to that point, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are as to whether to send direct mail versus digital only appeals in the next month or two. I would do both. A rising tide lifts all boats. And uh, and I would say do both because you'll have a bigger lift and a bigger response if you do both. But I do think that we are going to see as a sector a lot more online giving as we come uh, through this crisis. Because, you know, at a certain point, people might run out of stamps or, or you know, uh, but, but uh, and even if they do get your direct mail appeal, there many, I mean, many people get a direct mail appeal and choose to give online. And I think that we will see massive, massive trends in more online gifts. Okay, I'm gonna answer like, like I've gotten a lot of these. I'm gonna answer like one more because I wanna be respective of us going over time. Beth said, we had launched a campaign early in the year to make a leap in revenue and hire new program staff. Should we tell our donors and sending foundation asks that we recognize that this is not the time and show how we are retooling programs during this crisis? Okay, so this, for each and every one of you, this is a decision for you in terms of what are we going to do? What, what, I would say don't cut the fundraising staff do, and do not stop fundraising, but you have to make your own appropriate programmatic decision around what programs are we moving ahead with? Are there programs that we're canceling? Are there programs that we're modifying? And what do we need to raise money for? Um, this isn't just like a total free for all. These are strategic decisions that you're making as an organization based on how you're able to serve your clients now and how you're able to fundraise now. So you have to make those decisions for yourself. Um, I don't know, based on what you've said, Beth, in terms of the campaign that you did uh, to hire new programs up, I don't know how this crisis is impacting this campaign or what you were doing and that staff member. Um, but it's, it's a decision for you to make in terms of, can this program continue in this crisis? Is it appropriate for this program to continue in this crisis? Maybe the answer is this program has never been more needed and we absolutely must, must do this. It's really up to you to know. 
So Crystal asked, how many peels are recommended in a given month or over a three month period? So this is, this is, I would say this isn't like a one size fits all. And I would also say that like, kind of also everything, everything's changed. Like our whole world has changed really, really quickly. So the organizations that are impacted by this, the organizations who are moving fast on this are, are, are going to see responses. And those organizations are sending appeals frequently um, and they are sending appeals on a like a weekly basis and they are sending a combination of email appeals and direct mail appeals and they are moving forward and they are going to continue to fundraise until they and, and let their data inform their decisions in terms of when it is no longer working so um, I would say it it isn't it um, time is of the essence right now and the sooner you communicate your need to your donors and invite your donors to help you in supporting that need uh, the more success that you're gonna see as time moves forward and as we move ahead uh, there'll uh, be more and more fundraising and more and more potential you know I don't, I don't I'm not an economist and I'm not a psychic so I don't know what all is gonna happen but I would say time is of the essence uh, if you have an urgent uh, need that you want to communicate to your donors, this is your time to do so. Okay, so we're like, we went like 20 minutes over. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, we're having fun. This is awesome. We're having fun. We're having fun. <laughs> I'm having fun. I don't speak for everyone, but. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll take a couple more because uh, okay. I do have another meeting that I have to go to, but I had someone <laughs> typed in and said, what is the best day of the week or time of day to send an e-blast? It look, open up your file, open up your, per, open up your account and look whatever you're using, whether you're using Glimmering or you're using like active campaigns or you're using uh, MailChimp, look and you can look and see uh, when you get your highest opens, when you get your best open rate, um, you know it from your own data. So I, Stephen could do a whole webinar on like just looking oh, at yeah. your data and letting your data. And have. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely. So this is an interesting one. I don't really, this is an interesting one from Eva. Do you have any recommendations for memorial, memorializing donors or constituents who have passed away from the virus? I feel like this is also fresh. I certainly don't have any examples of that. Um, I don't have any examples of that, but of course, my goodness. I mean, if you were doing, uh, I mean, if someone was named, I guess what, Eva, am I right that what you're talking about is someone naming your organization um, when as when this person passes away that they can make gifts to you in memory of them? Am I correct in understanding that that's what you're asking? I mean, I would just say that you need to be, as with any thank you, you need to be especially um, cognizant of... Um, any gift that is made, you know, in a bereavement, thank you. It is, we're, we're so touched and we're so honored and we want to especially thank you for um, in this time of sadness and grief that you took, that you were so generous to make such a kind uh, contribution to us. So that's something that you are definitely gonna need to be uh, honoring in your thank you. I'm not sure if I, if I Hopefully I answered that correctly. Oh, great. So Trisha said, Trisha Ambler shared that there's a group in New York City who had a staff person die from the virus. They did a beautiful online tribute to him. Oh, it was wow. sheltering arms. So that is awesome. Okay, I gotta, I gotta answer this from Carrie. Oh my goodness. We have an annual campaign piece that's ready to go out in the mail, but it does not address the pandemic at all. Should we still send it? Carrie, you can tell me if this pandemic impacts your organization, but you would sound tone deaf if you did not. Uh, you would sound completely tone deaf. I feel like um, you, 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 you don't, you, the greatest gift we can give our donors is the gift of being known by us. And think about communication that you get that doesn't have it doesn't acknowledge that we're in a whole new reality. I mean, you feel like, what is this? Is this meant for me? Is this person, did they mean to send me this a long time ago? One of the, one of the main things that I want you guys all to do in this is you need to revisit your campaigns and you, you, this is the elephant in the room and you absolutely have to 
acknowledge it. You're not being like a Debbie Downer to acknowledge it. You're, you're letting your donors feel known by you uh, and seen by you and appreciated by you because their life has changed a lot. I wonder if Carrie could do a, could do a quick email to everyone maybe right away now and then let the direct mail piece hit, hit the mailboxes as planned. Maybe, maybe like head it off with the past with an email. Yeah. I don't know yeah. Like yeah. yeah, absolutely. If she can't, if she can't make changes in terms of, in yeah. terms of that, absolutely. Uh, you bet. You bet. Awesome. Okay. Um, I hope that you guys have found this helpful. I have loved getting to be with you. It's been amazing. I'm going to do my best to answer anything that I didn't get to answer in a blog post. And I'm going to send you guys everything. This recording should be up soon. And I'm going to send you a link to, I'm going to send you an email that's going to have a link to all of the videos. It's going to have a link to the slides as well. And you can grab those there. Um, that's my contact information. I've loved getting to be with you. I hope that you found this inspiring. Um, and uplifting. Thank you for spending your time with me and your time with Stephen. And um, you are doing important work in the world and we want to see you succeed. Be brave yeah. and be fearless. This is awesome, Rachel. We owe you a thanks as well for not only doing this short notice, but, but answering questions for an extra half hour, which is awesome. <laughs> Main takeaways for me were don't stop. You know, this isn't the time to be sheepish. I think if you're hearing that from your board, they're wrong. I don't I'd have them call me because I've, I've been doing these webinars the last two weeks. I've had guests on like Rachel every day. And that's been the one piece of advice that everyone has said is this is not the time to stop. In fact, this is kind of the time to put the pedal to the metal. Um, and then the other thing I heard from you, Rachel, which was so uplifting is like, you're all matter. You're, you're all essential. Even if you think you're non essential, like the, the library, my YMCA, you know, um, the, the animal shelters, you're all important. And the people who were, who were visiting you and donating to you, they thought you were important before this. And I'm, I'm guessing they still think you're important. So yeah, they know. love you and they want yeah. you to be okay. And, and they're thinking, well, how are they doing over there? If you yeah. haven't, if, for those of you that haven't updated them, your donors want to know that you're okay. And you have an opportunity to show that you care and check in with yep. your donors and make sure they're okay. That's it. This is awesome, Rachel. Thanks for doing this. It's my pleasure. <laughs> and thanks to all of you for hanging out um, on a Friday. What a, I couldn't think of a better way to, to spend a Friday afternoon. So I, I'm, I really appreciate all of you guys hanging out with us. Reach out to Rachel. I'm going to get her all the questions. I know we didn't get to all the questions, um, but we're going to get those in her hand. That way you can um, uh, be reaching out. So I'm going to just let you all know the next thing we got going on. We got a webinar on Tuesday. Uh, talking about multi-channel marketing. So this is uh, along the same line. So if you're reaching out by email, social media, text, video, all the things we talked about, she's going to kind of break it down for you. So 1 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday, totally free. Love to see you again. And we got lots of more webinars coming up. You'll see on our schedule. Um, so hopefully we'll see you again you know, on another, another session. So uh, we'll call it a day there. Thanks again for hanging out. Just look for an email from both of us. We'll send you all the stuff. Don't worry, we'll get it in your hands today. And uh, hopefully see you again uh, next time. So stay safe, uh, stay safe, stay sane if you're, you're indoors. And, uh, you know, we're all thinking about you. So have a good rest of your Thursday. Have a good weekend. We'll talk to you again soon.